Hey guys, I'm really excited to bring you my mid-2016 full review of the Microsoft Surface Book. This is Microsoft's first laptop, but also a remarkable 2-in-1 Windows PC. I have a ton of great things to say about the Surface Book, but also a handful of things to criticize. Microsoft calls their Surface Book the ultimate laptop. So, is it really one? Let's find out. The Surface Book I'll be reviewing is one of the highest tier models, which has a 6th generation Intel Core i7 Skylake processor, a 512GB solid state drive, 16GB of RAM, and a dedicated GPU. The model I have is priced at around $2700. There is a 1TB model priced at around $3200, and the base model of the Surface Book is priced at around $1500. Opening the box, the first thing you'll see is the Surface Book itself. On the right is the compartment that holds the charger. Take out the Surface Book and behind it will be the included Surface Pen and some documentation. To start off, the Surface Book is an impressively well-built 2-in-1 laptop with a body made out of a magnesium alloy, which has a much more distinguishable texture compared to aluminum. The chiseled sides and edges give it a sort of industrial look and feel, which some people may not love. But personally, I love it because it makes the Surface Book feel like a truly premium device. Since this is a 2-in-1, the keyboard base and the display are two separate components. The display component of the Surface Book detaches to become a tablet, or as Microsoft likes to call it, the clipboard. On the tablet portion, you have the power button, volume buttons, an oddly placed headphone jack on the top right corner, and a spot along the left side to magnetically mount the included Surface Pen. The headphone jack is placed in a word spot. It's very distracting when using your Surface Book in laptop mode, however the position seems to be perfect in tablet mode. Now let's talk about the hinge. Microsoft calls this the fulcrum hinge, which is definitely a very peculiar hinge, but also a unique one. When opening up, the hinge expands and opens up for a farther, although slightly more comfortable, viewing distance. But when you close the lid, it causes a gap. Now when you see this gap for the first time, you'll definitely question the durability of the Surface Book's hinge in, let's say, a full backpack. You might wonder if the hinge could possibly collapse or break. However, I can confirm that this hinge is strong and definitely reliable. At the worst, it's been in a full crammed backpack and thrown all over the place a few times, but the hinge has never been damaged by such vigorous handling of a full backpack. However, the gap that the hinge creates has the potential to gather dust. When it's sitting on a desk, it won't gather any dust. If any, then probably just along the sides of the keyboard base. But when it's sitting in a backpack with the zipper open, expect some unwelcomed particles the next time you open it up. Let's talk about the CPU and the GPU now. The Surface Book comes with 6th generation Intel Skylake processors that are all 15 watt dual core CPUs. My Surface Book model has the Intel Core i7-6600U CPU, which has a base clock speed of 2.6GHz. Also, there are other cheaper Surface Book models that come with an Intel Core i5. Now let's get into the Surface Book's Graphics Processing Unit, or GPU. This is one of the biggest topics to talk about when it comes to the Surface Book. Inside that Intel Skylake processor, you have an integrated Intel Graphics 520 GPU with 8283MB of memory. That's not too bad. Then there's the unique dedicated GPU, which only some Surface Book models have. This unique DGPU is an NVIDIA GeForce graphics processing unit made exclusively for the Surface Book. This NVIDIA DGPU is a render-only display device, meaning it'll only be used for graphics-intensive tasks including, but not limited to, video editing, creating high-res digital art, or gaming. For those who are tech-savvy, it uses CUDA technology and contains 384 CUDA cores. Additionally, this DGPU has a base clock speed of 954 MHz, and 9,131 megabytes of GDDR5 video memory. So in a nutshell, it's the equivalent of an NVIDIA GeForce 940M. One gigabyte of video memory is more than reasonable for on-the-go video editing. However, only one gigabyte of video memory could be a deal breaker for PC gamers. Now let's talk about the display. You get a beautiful 13.5 inch display with Microsoft's PixelSense technology. It has an incredible 3000 by 2000 screen resolution with an aspect ratio of 3 to 2 and a 60 hertz refresh rate. In my opinion, I feel like this display is perfect for pretty much everything. However, I must mention a few things. When watching movies or YouTube videos in full screen, there will definitely be some letterboxing or black bars along the top and bottom of the display. Some people may not like that. I personally don't mind at all. It really isn't a big deal. When playing games, you'll either get a little bit of letterboxing or some major pillar boxing, which are black bars along the left and right sides of the screen. Of course, this all depends on your graphics settings. 
Litter boxing is always tolerable, but pillar boxing unfortunately isn't for me. It's quite unsatisfying and bothersome, and I'm sure some people agree. Viewing angles are excellent and everything is nice and sharp on this beautiful display. It can also get really bright, great for use under the sun, and also really dark, perfect for comfortable viewing at night. There are two cameras on the Surface Book, an 8 megapixel rear facing camera and a 5 megapixel front facing camera. The picture quality for the rear facing camera is actually quite nice. With the Windows camera app, it takes sharp pictures and focuses really well. But with this being a 13.5 inch tablet or laptop, you probably don't want to be seen taking pictures with this in public. You don't want to be this guy. However, the front facing camera is pretty tasty. It's sharp, clear, and much better than the built in webcams on most other Windows PCs. I use this camera very often. Also, both rear and front facing cameras can record HD video in 1080p at 30 frames per second. As always, the quality is better with the rear facing camera. Both cameras are also helped with mics. One of the many cool features of the Surface Book and Surface Pro 4 II would have to be Windows Hello. Next to the front facing camera, there is also a Windows Hello camera and sensor. When logging in, you can use your face to log into your account. For me, Windows Hello is really accurate. It works in pitch black darkness and it doesn't log you in if you put a picture of yourself in front of the camera. It's cool, accurate, and very secure. There are stereo front facing speakers on the left and right sides of the clipboard. They're alright. Not the best speakers you'll ever hear, and for an expensive product like this one, it's a little bit astonishing to find out that the sound quality of these speakers aren't better. System sounds sound awesome with these speakers, but everything else might not. They're great speakers indoors, but not too loud outdoors. I usually keep my volume around 70 or 80, which is reasonably loud indoors and still sounds fine. With the volume maxed out, you'll hear some distortion. The keyboard and glass trackpad are pretty sexy. The keyboard is extremely comfortable with reasonable key travel distance, and the trackpad is probably the best trackpad I've personally ever felt on a Windows laptop. Let's get a little bit in depth with the keyboard first. Like I said, reasonable key travel distance. If you're switching from a MacBook, it's really easy to get used to. There are four levels of backlighting that are great at night, but not during the day because the contrast isn't so great. The only major thing I don't like about the keyboard would be the placement of the up and down arrow keys. I don't know why laptops are starting to do this now, but since these two keys are so small and so close to each other, I might accidentally press the shift key instead of the up key. I didn't think I'd have this problem before I got the Surface Book, but after months of using my Surface Book, I realized that I was wrong. This is a real problem you can't avoid. Other than that though, great keyboard. Typing is much quieter than that of typing on a MacBook's keyboard, and the feel of the keys are unbelievably satisfying with the magnesium alloy Microsoft used. The glass trackpad is also amazing. This may just be the best trackpad I've ever used on a Windows PC. But while typing on this keyboard is quieter than typing on the MacBook's keyboard, clicking on the Surface Book's trackpad is much louder than the MacBook's trackpad. I had the occasional skip when it comes to tracking, but that was before a software update. Now the trackpad seems to be working perfectly. I must also mention that I never experienced any input trailing with this trackpad. If it isn't obvious already, the Surface Book comes with Windows 10 Pro installed as your operating system. If you know how Windows has been in the past, it's been a bit buggy. But there is one thing that Microsoft is really good at, and that would have to be rolling out updates. There's a ton of updates all the time, and it really is quite surprising. On my Surface Book running Windows 10, every Windows 10 cumulative update and Surface software update would make my experience smoother and much more stable per update. With the Windows 10 anniversary update just around the corner, we'll have to see how much better Windows 10 gets in late July. I also find Windows 10 to be a lot more functional, especially on the Surface Book, as opposed to Mac OS, but that's just my opinion. Now let's talk about battery life. Battery life is pretty important here because of the way Microsoft divides the battery life between the clipboard and the Surface Book's keyboard base. Microsoft used the 80-20 split when it comes to battery life, meaning 80% of the battery is on the keyboard base and only 20% is on the clipboard. For me, the split is pretty much perfect. Microsoft claims up to 4 hours on the clipboard alone and up to around 12 hours as a complete laptop. With my brightness setting set at around 75% and using the Surface Book on battery, I've been able to get around 3 hours rounded down with the clipboard alone and a little bit more than 10 hours as a complete laptop. This includes light 4K video editing, drawing using Autodesk Sketchbook Pro 7, moderate media consumption, 
and basic PC usage, such as checking email, looking at pictures, typing up notes on OneNote, and other smaller things. Yes, I've been able to reach Microsoft's claim of 12-hour battery, in fact even beyond that, but that's only with the brightness settings set to suggested and either only drawing or undergoing the most basic PC usage. However, some people always have their brightness set to 100%. At 100% brightness, you'll get only 2 hours maximum with the clipboard alone. As a complete laptop, you'll get up to 6 hours only, for at the very least. There are also some battery drain issues among some users. When the lid is closed and the device is sleeping, the Surface Book may get really hot and lose battery rapidly. Software updates have reduced the chances of this happening, and I'm happy to say that I no longer get battery drain issues after installing the software updates that were rolled out on June 20th. The new Surface Pen with 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity comes included with the Surface Book. It's an amazing stylus and I praise it very highly. There are only two buttons on this Surface Pen model. You have a clickable eraser at the top that is programmed in three different ways, and there is also a button along the side that acts as a right click. If silver isn't your thing, you can get another Surface Pen in black, dark blue, or gold for about $60 each. They all look really stylish. You can also get a set of pen tips for your Surface Pen for only $10. If you're an artist or you take notes a lot, getting these pen tips are 100% worth those 10 bucks. Now let's talk about digital art on the Surface Book. I'm extremely in love with sketching and drawing on my Surface Book. With Autodesk Sketchbook Pro 7, sketching isn't 100% like sketching on paper, but it's extremely close. The one major thing that prevents the Surface Book from feeling like drawing on paper would have to be the input lag. It's very very slight, but more noticeable than you may think. Pressure sensitivity is beyond acceptable. It's not like the 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity that most digital artists would rather have, but the Surface Book does a great job of making the drawing experience very satisfying even with only 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. Erasing with the Surface Pen is surprisingly very natural. Erasing doesn't scratch the screen and it has this very satisfying feel to it. Sometimes you'll find yourself looking for eraser dust on the screen. I thought that was kind of funny. Microsoft got the texture of the eraser part of the Surface Pen just right, and even after months of intense usage, it doesn't seem to be worn out by the slightest bit. You can click the eraser button once to open a new note in OneNote, double click the eraser to take a screenshot and send it to OneNote, and hold it to speak to Cortana. The eraser button can be reprogrammed in the Surface app. Speaking of OneNote, taking notes on the Surface Book is really natural. Sketching on Sketchbook Pro 7 might have not felt like pencil on paper, but taking notes on OneNote actually does. To test out how convenient this was in school, I brought my Surface Book to school a few times to take notes in class. After some software updates, taking notes on OneNote has never felt so perfect. Writing with the Surface Pen feels very natural and so does erasing. Highlighting and making charts and other things are also super convenient on OneNote. There isn't any major input lag when jotting down notes on OneNote, so this really beefed up the good in my note-taking experience. Let's get into video editing now. This part of the review is going to be really brief and not so extensive. The videos I've edited on my Surface Book were edited using Adobe Premiere Pro and none of the footage was pre-rendered, so I can report on the Surface Book's native performance with video editing. There's not too much to criticize about editing 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Premiere seems to handle it at full playback resolution very easily, reasonably smooth and very workable. Gladly, I can still work with 1080p HD video at 60 frames per second on full resolution playback, but expect some drop frames especially if you apply some heavy VFX. Half resolution playback will still drop frames but not as much when compared to full resolution playback. One fourth resolution playback seems to drop the least amount of frames as expected. Editing a really basic 4K video at 30 frames per second isn't half bad at half resolution playback, but when you start to apply heavy amounts of VFX, you start to drop a ton of frames and then everything becomes a pain in the neck. So editing full HD video on the Surface Book is reasonable and workable. It's painless for very light projects, however, heavier projects would begin to drop frames. Editing 4K video on the Surface Book can be difficult. For light projects, a handful of drop frames may be the least of your concern. But for heavier projects, editing is difficult and potentially painful. But after some software updates, you might notice that editing 4K video on the Surface Book gets better over time. It's really mysterious, but definitely true. So the review is coming to an end, but let's recap on a few main things about the Surface Book. 
First, let's talk about some of the problems with the Surface Book that are now resolved. At a point of time, the Surface Book had battery drain issues. When the lid is closed and the device is sleeping, it would become very hot and the fans would start kicking in. Simultaneously, the battery would drain very fast while in sleep mode, and, if you're unlucky, the Surface Book would shut down while it's sleeping. These were the Surface Book's biggest problems for months until software updates that were released in June greatly reduced the possibility of these issues occurring. Today, battery drain and sleep issues are a thing of the past, for me at least. It's one of those issues where some people still get it and some people now don't. Although, there are rare instances where my Surface Book will start to get warm while it's sleeping. It doesn't get scorching hot though, so these warm temperatures seem to be normal. Some unlucky people still complain that the Surface Book crashes and forces itself to shut down overnight. I personally no longer had this issue after recent software updates, but we'll have to see what happens over time. Now, why would the Surface Book be the better laptop compared to the competition? The Surface Book would be the better laptop because, one, it's a two-in-one so you get the best of both worlds, a tablet and a laptop. Two, it's a very powerful machine capable of handling many various tasks, much better than other cheaper Windows PCs. Three, the Surface Book has a gorgeous display that is truly perfect for all kinds of tasks. And four, the Surface Book is extremely well built one of the few Windows PCs right now that shows how powerful it is through its build quality, and not just its tech specs. Most Windows laptops can either look and feel cheap, perform like a cheap budget computer, or both. And amazingly, the Surface Book is not cheap or underperforming. It's a really powerful 2-in-1 and even looks and feels powerful thanks to its amazing build quality. Just by looking at the Surface Book and feeling its unique magnesium body, you can really feel the effort Microsoft has put in it to make it one of the best Windows PCs out there right now. And after recent software updates, I really am not afraid to call it one of the best Windows PCs out there, if not the best. Let's be realistic though, it is a 2-in-1, so it obviously isn't going to be as beastly as a desktop PC or some extremely high-end Windows laptop, but I do believe that the Surface Book is way more performant and way more attractive than the majority of its competition. Yes, it is very, very expensive, but once you start to figure out what you would mainly use the Surface Book for, you'll start to appreciate how productive and convenient having one really is. And with that being said, would I recommend the Surface Book? Yes, absolutely. However, the Surface Book isn't exactly for everyone. There are a few situations where other laptops would be better than the Surface Book. If you're a gamer, you might be enticed into getting a Surface Book after hearing about its dedicated NVIDIA GPU. But having only 1GB of video memory, it might not be the best choice for high performance gaming. There are a lot of other laptops out there that come built with much better graphics cards such as gaming laptops from Razer or laptops from the ROG product line. Video editors also have needs quite similar to that of a gamer's. Editing video is also very graphics intensive, so laptops that come built with better graphics cards may be a better buy. However, 1GB can be very suitable for a video editor, unlike gamers. If all you do is make YouTube videos or short films and edit them using programs like Adobe Premiere Pro, the Surface Book would be your on-the-go editing machine. But for those professional cinematographers and film editors who film raw footage and edit using programs like Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, I wouldn't even recommend the Surface Book nor any other laptop. Just get a desktop Windows PC. Also, if you're looking for a Windows laptop or 2-in-1 just for emailing, video chat, web browsing, media consumption, and other very basic things, the Surface Book may be too much of an expensive device for you. This is why there are other cheaper Windows PCs out there, so consumers who aren't necessarily power users can afford a PC to do the most basic tasks. But if you really want a Surface Book just because it's such a sexy 2-in-1 and it has all these cool little features, then by all means, get what you want. If you have the money, I'm not stopping you. After all, I do recommend this product. So this concludes my mid-2016 full review on the Microsoft Surface Book. I went through a physical hardware analysis and talked about the tech specs, certain parts of the hardware in detail, my user experience, and problems that are now fixed. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, drop a like. And if you loved it, I'd love a sub too. My time is up, so I'll see you guys again in my next video.